Hello and welcome to Extra Time with me, Gary James. Now, this programme, we're going to take a look at the world of roller derby with the girls. We uh, popped along to the Doug Ellis Sports Centre in Perry Bar and met up with City Centre Roller Girls to find out all about um, how long they've been involved in the sport, what they do, what the league's like. And uh, I had a chat with their uh, coach, Il Billy. But before we do that, uh, if you'd like to let us know about a sport you play that we're not talking about on Extra Time, then please get in touch. It's sport at bigcentre.tv. But now, let's hear from Il Billy about how he got into the sport of roller derby. I've been playing roller derby for a short amount of time, about uh, almost a year. Um, I'd got involved with the women's team here. I knew people involved with the actual team. Um, I started skating alongside and, and got to know them. Um, I got involved coaching the uh, B team, um, the, the team in general. And then um, over the course of a couple of years, I've uh, took on the head coach role. So were you uh, playing uh, men's roller derby? Before? I do, yeah. I play for a team in London, Southern Discomfort, um, and I'm also on the England team. And obviously, it's, 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 at the moment, it's not a professional sport over here, is it? So you, you must have a daytime job. What do you do? I do, yeah. I'm a media executive for a newspaper locally. Um, but, yeah, we treat it professionally. <laughs> and, and, I mean, roller derby is growing now in the UK, isn't it? You know, there's more and more teams coming up. But tell us a little bit about the game. What's, what's the idea? What's the objective of each, of each match or each game? Well, the objective is obviously to win. Uh, there's two teams of 14. Um, we field five at a time. There is one player that wears a signifier, a star on the top of their head, and it's their job to get past everyone uh, and score the points and win the game. OK, so a bit like uh, British Bulldog or something we used to play in the playground years Yeah, so, almost, yeah. Something like American football without the ball. Yeah, say, full contact. Like um, how, how, do you, how do you train for, for roller derby? What, what do you do in the training sessions? Uh, well, a lot of work's put into training outside of actually skating, so a lot of, uh, you know, work in the gym, running, all kinds of stuff like that. But, you know, the, the girls here, they train four times a week um, and, and they work really hard to get to the level they are. That's quite a commitment, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Don't tend not to see it like that. It's more, you know, it's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a hobby at the end of the day. And, and when somebody new wants to, comes along, because uh, obviously, obviously you're looking for new people all the time. Yeah, of course. Um, how long is it before they reach a standard that you're happy with uh, that gets them into the, into the team and they're actually playing matches? Well, people can uh, progress really, really quickly um, if you've got a bit of a background or if you, you know, you're, you're just generally quite sporting. Um, you know, it, you don't have to be sporting. You can come in from any kind of background, any kind of experience. You'd be surprised how, how quickly people pick it up. You know, within a couple of months, people are, people are playing games and having fun. What sort of what sort of strengths do the do the women sort of uh, pick up um, and and when they join you? Um, yeah. Is is it is it a strength? It, as in physical strength, is it, is it a mental thing that they, they pick up or they improve on? Is it, is it good for toning up? Yeah, definitely. I think anyone that gets involved with the sport soon realises that you know they've got these qualities already um, and Raleigh Derby is just a great way of, uh, of bringing that out. And, and how would you, as a coach, how would you like to see roller derby with, uh, with the girls develop generally across, across the Midlands and the UK? Well, it, you know, it's developed huge amounts over the last few years. Um, team, teams in, in England go over to, um, to play in America. Um, we're off to America in May to play in a, a WFTDA tournament. Um, but, yeah, just seeing people playing at the top of their game, you know, whether they're playing for their first time or playing for their 50th time. And you saying you're, you're going over to America later on in the year. Um, is, is that funded through sponsorship or, or do, the, do the women have to... You know, fund it themselves. How, how does that work? Well, obviously, we, we, we kind of fund things ourselves, but we do things like fundraisers. We do have really good sponsors that look after us in that, mm. that respect. Um, you know, so we have lots of different ways of, of making that happen. And, and it's, it's, when somebody comes to, to, to join for the first time at Roller Derby, um, are you looking for any special sort of physical attributes that the, 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 the women might have? Or um, well, you can you can spot a great skater straight away, but we don't tend to look for that because that kind of stuff will you know will, will happen naturally. Um, you know, it doesn't take long before people are you know are doing really well uh, and showing their skill. And what, what's the difference between say people that are used to ice skating mm -hmm. and maybe playing a bit of ice hockey yeah. to when they come and they put the the, um, the roller skates on? Is, is there a difference? I, well, there is obviously the sports different, but uh, the skill set is just really really. Uh, 
really adaptable. Any kind of skating, it's not going to be the same, but you're going to have a certain level of, uh, of skill already. Uh, I suppose balance is yeah, one of the main balance, things that yeah. comes in. in but these kind of things, you, you know, you're taught, obviously. Skating, roller derby is a complete different set of skills that you will learn. So, you know, if you've got some background, even if it's football, netball, badminton, it's not going to make a difference because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a mindset to play the sport and then we can always build on. And, and as, as a coach, is, is there a governing body for roller derby that, that you have to um, take coaching badges or, or qualify in any way to, to, to give you sort of the right to be a coach? No, a lot of it's done through experience. Um, the, there are coaching um, classes you can do. There are, you know, there are conferences and different things like that. We have um, several governing bodies. We have a, the UK RDA, which is the UK's official governing body. Um, we are under something called WFTDA, which is the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, and that governs the rule set and that governs, um, you know, the way we run the league and the, the actual um, ranking structures. Right. Um, and then there's the, the, the men's side of things as well, and they're both, you know, both associated. So now we're, uh, we've caught up with Joe and Claire from the Central City Roller Girls. Um, girls, ladies, thank you for taking the time at your training session. Um, you're both A-team skaters. Yep, right. what, what does that mean? So the A-team is made up of um, the skaters on the, from the league who are generally um, at the highest level of ability. Um, so we play competitively in sort of international forums as well as nationally. Yeah, essentially it's made up of the 12 top skaters within the league and um, those are the state skaters who go out there and represent Central City Roller Girls um, at the highest ability. So you say within the league because there's about 50 or more members isn't there within Central yeah. City Roller Girls. So within those 50 do you have your own league or is it? No, it's just known as a league. We're not actually our own league with different teams within it. Um, we are Central City Roller Girls, the league, and within Central City Roller Girls we have an A team, a B team, and um, rookie skaters right. involved as well. Okay, still as clear as mud, but never mind. <laughs> and, and how long have both of you been, uh, been, been skating and been, been members? I've been skating for um, about four and a half years now. Um, I've been a member of CCR for about three years. I actually transferred from the Leicestershire Dolly Rocket Rollers um, about three years ago now. And I think I've been skating for around four or five years mm. and I've been with CCR all of that time. And what do you get out of it? Why do you do it? It's really fun. <laughs> and we're really good at it as well. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, yes, definitely. Yes. Um, I think for me, it's more learning a new skill and there's always more to learn and it's always building upon um, trying to get a bit better than you were yesterday and I think that's what I love about it and that's what keeps me coming back. Mm. I mean you train uh, three, four times a week so there's a lot of sort of dedication and Absolutely. takes a lot of time yeah. out, out of your, your, your social life I suppose. So, but so, work wise, yes. what, what, what do you both do for, for a living? Um, well, I'm, I'm a research coordinator, um, so at the moment I manage a nationwide cancer research study uh, with 12 hospitals around the UK. Okay, so that takes some, some, some time. Certainly does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm a hydrogeologist, so I work in um, contaminated land um, and contaminated groundwater, um, which is my day job. Okay, so we got two clever buggers. <laughs> yes, you do. I suppose so. But, is, but, but the girls, the, 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 the women that the, the skate and the members of, of the, the um, Central City Roller Girls, um, come from all walks of, of life. Oh, absolutely. Gosh, absolutely. You've got everyone. We've got teachers. We have a, quite a few speech and language therapists. We've <laughs> got doctors, all sorts of people. And, and um, yourselves, um, what's, what's the most enjoyable part and then what's the bit that you don't really like? Um, I think in terms of what I enjoy the most is probably on game days. Um, coming together as a team, having that really special moment. We've got a very set routine which we carry out prior to uh, setting foot on that track. And from the moment that routine starts to the end of the, the final whistle, it's just absolute adrenaline. It's absolutely wonderful. And what, what, do, you, what do you get out of it? What, how has it changed you if it has at all? Uh, I'm a lot fitter than I used to be. I pretty much didn't do any exercise before I started roller derby. I'd never really skated before. Um, so I've basically been taught to skate from the ground up. Um, and yeah, I'm now a lot stronger, a lot faster, a lot more agile than I used to be. So. Yeah, certainly. And I'm much the same. I came from quite an active background, um, but now I, as well as training, probably go to the gym three or four times a week as well. Um, and I do mainly strength training and Olympic lifting to try and help um, 
my performance on track. So there we go. The uh, the ideas and the thoughts of, of the coach, Il Billy, and two of the players from City Centre Roller Girls there uh, on um, their enjoyment, what the sport means to them, and uh, what, what's important to them in the league, and, and also a bit about the social side as, as well. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to uh, find out more about Roller Derby. We'll be chatting to another player and a referee. Join us in part two. Welcome back. This is Extra Time with me, Gary James, and we've been uh, taking a look at the world of roller derby. Um, we visited the uh, girls from City Centre Roller Girls uh, down there at the Doug Ellis Sports Centre in Perry Bar. Now, let's continue and catch up with the captain of the team. Um, I've been skating for about five and a half, six years now. Um, and I have been skating with um, Central City Roller Girls on the A-team for a few years and also um, with Team Ireland um, Roller Derby as well. So I've been really lucky to compete internationally as well and fortunate enough to go to the World Cup a few years ago for that. Oh, well, so you, you must be an A-team skater then? Yes, yeah, that's right. So are you, are you going to America as well? Yeah, well, that's the aim. We're hoping to travel to Miami um, to play um, a tournament in May. It's called Beach Brawl, um, where we should be meeting quite a few competitive teams while we're out there. And how long are you going for? Well, we're going probably for around about a week. I think most people are going there for a week. The tournament is a full weekend, so it's Friday to Sunday. Um, and we'll be playing games across the whole weekend while we're there. And for you personally, is it the first time you've, you've been abroad? And uh... No, I've been, I've been really lucky to be able to travel abroad quite a few times. I went to um, America um, a couple of years ago to play in the World Cup, so that was in, in Texas, um, and played against some international teams there. And we've also, as an A-team, Central City Roller Girls have travelled to lots of European cities to play different tournaments or to play um, single games against um, teams in Ghent, in Belgium, in France, in Germany, in Sweden, in, against Stockholm. So we've had lots of opportunities. Oh, wow. So how many other girls have actually played against American teams? Um, there's another one of my teammates, uh, Dana, who was also on uh, Team Ireland, so she's played against some American teams. And then a few years ago, um, not me, but um, some of the players here um, played against an American team who came over here. Right. Um, so you've got a little experience yes. of what, what you're going to uh, sort yeah. of face when you go over there, and obviously you pass that on to the rest of your teammates. Yeah, and we also spend a lot of time watching some really high-level um, American teams. Um, playing games so we we kind of know what to expect while we're out there. What's been your, your biggest challenge as, as a team? Um, we've had some really challenging and difficult match matchups over the last few years. Um, more recently we've played um, some teams that we really kind of aspire to play. Um, so Stockholm were a team that we really really wanted to play. Um, they're one of the top European teams and we were really lucky to meet them uh, in September last year, it was a really tough game and a really um, challenging matchup. But um, we learnt a lot from it. And, and when you come to training, um, what, what's the coaching like, and what do you go through? Obviously, it's obviously physical, but yeah. is it mental strength as well? Yeah, I think there's um, a, a mix of lots of different skills that are needed. Really, when we when we um, train, we we do several sessions across the week. So normally three to four sessions where we're focusing in on lots of our um, skating skills and the game so strategy plays a big part um, but we also do lots of off skates training around fitness and endurance um, and lots of people um, watch footage to help build up tactical knowledge as well and as a team we have lots of routines around mental preparation for gamers, games as well. And, and how competitive is the team? Uh, because we people joining all the time, you've got what, over 50 members now. Yes, people yeah. People fighting for places? Absolutely. It is a really competitive sport now and people come to it for lots of different reasons. There are people who come to it because they want the um, enjoyment element of it and they want the fitness and the fun and the team element that it brings. Um, and other people come to it because they're really interested in the really competitive nature of it. Um, a team like CCR, we're quite big, so we can have different levels, which can cater for lots of different people. So we have an A team and a B team. And for both of those teams, the spots are very competitive. Um, 
you know, and it's the same with many leagues across the UK and across the world, I would say, that, that it's just getting more and more competitive now. Uh, and um, is, there, is there much travelling involved when you play, play your matches? Yeah, lots of travelling. So weekends um, tend to get taken up quite a lot with tournaments and games. Um, and um, we travel far and wide. So we have lots of games in the UK, but last season we had l lots of away games. So we travelled... Um, to lots of different places in Europe. We travelled to, to Scotland, to um, Wales as well. Um, we actually didn't have any home games last season, so lots and lots of travel, yeah. And, and obviously that costs money to yep. do that. So, so how, how is it funded? Do you all have to pay subs or...? Yeah, well, we pay um, subs, which covers the cost of our hall hire so that we can train and would subsidise um, some of the costs that we accrue throughout the year as well. Um, we do have some sponsorship which, which um, goes towards our um, kit we wear, so the shirts that we wear. Um, so Skate Hut are our sponsors for that and they, they um, fund, help fund that. Um, travel is very much um, self-funded most of the time. We do fundraising activities throughout the year where we will um, try to raise some money to contribute towards it. Um, and you know th through kind of organizing different things and we, we're always trying to seek out sponsorship um, so we we have people who are actively contacting local businesses to try and get sponsorship it is quite difficult you know for many teams in the UK to get that, that kind of um, support um, you know and it is something that we have to you know we try and fund um, ourselves and for any any um, women watching now that maybe yeah. are thinking oh, I wouldn't mind having a go at that yeah. as, as we're talking about the sponsorship and funding and that side of it is it an expensive sport to get involved with um, the initial um, setup isn't um, isn't crazily expensive so uh, we for example would run um, sessions that people can come to that cost five pounds per session that's two hours of skating and you get your kit hire included in that yeah. and then once I think you've if you've established that it's something you'd like to stick with that's when you might look to buy some of the kit so um, you're looking at roller skates um, helmet pads those kind of things which all add up um, you know it's it can be an expensive sport but it can it depends on how far you want to go with it lots of people have customised equipment which is a lot more expensive but you can get much more cheaper kind of entry level stuff as well to start with. So Ed, um, obviously Hi. we can see from uh, from your kit there that you're a referee. Yeah. How long have you been involved in uh, roller derby? Uh, I've been involved for just coming up to six years now. So I learned to skate six years so I've been refereeing for about five and a half. Why did you get involved? Um, well I met a bunch of the girls who were at, um, at one of the parties after their games. So um, I just asked them what they were doing. They looked like they were having a fun time, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Good way to meet girls. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> as it happens. And, and, and do, you, uh, do you skate for, or do you play with any any mentor? Uh, no, I, I used to play um, sort of about two or three years ago now, but um, I haven't been playing since. It came to a point where it was to progress either playing or officiating, and so officiating was kind of really where my heart lay. So I just went with that. So, rules-wise, is there a lot to uh, learn and digest? Uh, there is. There is an awful lot. And to be honest, you never really stop learning. Um, so you see it's a lot of new stuff at a lot of levels. And it always makes you go back at the end of the day and flick through that rule book to find out whether you made that right call or not. And we assume we're watching the, um, the, the, the women train there. Um, that there's more than one of you, so why is that? Yeah, Anybody there's isn't? seven of us in total, and sometimes there's one off just to the side to provide feedback and insight to the game. Um, because of the nature of the track, uh, we need three referees just on the outside alone, because um, that track is so much longer um, around the outside, the circumference of that. So they need eyes on the pack um, at all the time. And then you have two on the inside who are just watching the point scorers. And then you have two on the inside who are um, watching for pack infringements. And so is it, because we're watching them go around and, and the idea is, is the one with the star on, on the hat yeah, is trying to get past the others uh, and they're trying to block. Yeah. So rules wise, is there only certain ways that are allowed to, to block the person with the... Yeah, um, by any legal means. So you, you can't block, say, directly to the back. Um, you can't skate clockwise around the wrong way to initiate on somebody. 
um, and you can't initiate sort of below mid thigh or above the shoulders. So no tripping or throwing punches or anything. It's not like in the movies. So I mean, so we're, we're watching them, and um, it's it's very physical. It can so, be, yeah. I mean, I mean as, as as a referee, you and you and you the other referees that that, um, that you work with. Yeah. I mean. You must have to have eyes everywhere. <laughs> well, because there are seven of us, we, we take a different spot of coverage for the pack each. So it all gets covered, but it might not just get all get covered by one person. Yeah. And what do you enjoy most about it? Um, it's good physical exercise and it's a great game to just watch. Um, sort of the intricacies and, and the officiating, being in the middle of the track, we've got the best view. Is there one particular match that you've officiated in that, that really sticks in you? in your mind? Um, well, yeah, actually, yes. Um, doing the, the Men's World Cup, uh, we were lucky enough to do the final, and it was, um, no, sorry, it wasn't the final. It was um, USA versus Scotland. And of course, the Scottish fans were there in force. They were very loud, they were very boisterous, and the USA were all over them for the majority of the game. But once Scotland got out and got lead jammer, so they're in control of the jam, and the whole crowd just went wild. I've never been hit by a wall of noise like that before or since. Well, there you go. Interesting stuff. And uh, God, those girls can state, and it's frightening when you're right close up to them. So many thanks to uh, all the girls and the guys, of course, at City Centre Roller Girls. And if you'd like to get in touch, it's sport at bigcentre.tv.